Italian queso blanco. And this is our head chef who created the recipe. It's made with all real ingredients, no preservatives, and nothing artificial. This is real queso blanco. And this is what queso should be. I thought I'd play around with this tonight and see how we feel about it. can't hear too well. So my audio is too bad. Oh, come on. And I don't know. I don't know what it is.
Try one more thing. Um, let's see what this one is. See if this does it. Um, can you guys hear this at all? I know it doesn't look like Ashley at all. What is this? I'm the most disappointing Ashley you'll ever see. Oh, can you can hear me? This is is this working a little bit better? Is this louder? Ah, fine. Okay, so we'll just we'll just use this. Um, I don't know if the audio is going to be as good, but it will at least you guys can hear me. Now we're going to try to switch back to do some music as well. But if this is just too loud, we'll turn it down. So let me know if the music is up too much. Just one more thing. It's the music way loud. <laughs> Sorry, the sound is very, very low. Can't hear. Mm. I just might kill the audio. We'll figure that out another time. Still soft. Then I'm gonna kill the audio because you probably can't hear me. Let's see. Um, is this any better or worse? <sighs> okay, just trying some things, playing around with some settings. This is the long lost red beard. <laughs> Still lost, probably. <laughs> the music is okay. You can't. Some people say they can hear me. Maybe, it, maybe not. The sound is better. This is better. This is okay. Okay, much better. They say. Okay, I'm gonna just keep it as this. Maybe no music as much as like music is cool. We'll just not worry about that right now.
Anyways, hi guys, how's it going? Figured we'd just play around with um, this for a little bit, since we have it. Yeah, it's been a long time. Oh man, never shave it off. I I don't know if I can, because if I do, then like I look really young, and then like I also see that like it's always a mistake when I shave off my beard. As much as like I get so infuriated with it at times. That like all I want to do is shave it off. Um, but then my wife is much wiser than I am. She's like, don't shave it off. You'll instantly regret it. Because every single time I do, I instantly regret it. <laughs> I know. If I shave my beard, then like, I'll just be the no beard? What? I don't know. I think there'll always be a beard on my heart, whether I have a physical beard or not. <laughs> We're just going to mush things around for a little bit here. Um, the sound is okay. I just also grew my beard. Just needed two, three months for the length. Not sure. If it's... <laughs> I know it, the thing. The thing is why I, I grow a beard. Like why I started growing a beard. At least um, it was all because like I hate shaving, and like I basically to have like a a clean face, I need to shave every day. Um. So it's just like so much work to keep up. I'm going to just turn off. Where are those eyes? So it's more out of laziness that I do it more than anything else. Yeah, and that itchy stage can last forever. Oh my gosh. Yeah, the, so this um, the concept is by this amazing artist, Sur Serge. I don't know how to say his name very well. Anyways, super nice guy. Like, and his all of his stuff is super awesome. So we're just gonna scroll down his long list of amazingness, which he has. Um, but yeah, his con it's concept from him. And we'll just kind of play around with with some shapes and stuff. You know, I'm starting from a base mesh today, just for time's sake. And like, just kind of see how things start feeling out. Um, I'm sure I'm getting missing comments. Um, I know, it's either you have a giant beard or no beard. I don't know, I don't mind having like a big beard. You know, I actually like, I have come to enjoy the grooming process. Like I've, you know, I take good good care of of my beard, you know, beard balm and some mustache wax and you know I'm, I'm set I feel I like kind of taking care of myself every day to like make it look nice plus I'm a naturally cold person 
so if I shave it, I get like super cold. <laughs> Oh man, that's awesome. Thanks, Night Shadow. I know. I think most, like, now that I think of it, I don't think most of my kids have seen me without a beard. Um, I can't remember the last time I, like, shaved, shaved. Because I'll, like, trim back. I'll go from, like, you know, big, thick beard to, like, a shorter beard. And when I mean, sh when I say short, I mean, like, instead of, like, a finger length it's like a half a finger length um but i don't know if any of my kids have seen me without a beard beard Um, yes, I did work on the Disney Infinity figures. Yeah, it was that was a dream project. I was talking about the Disney Infinity project a couple days ago with some friends, and just like it was such a cool project to work on. I mean, I I grew up, you know, a huge a huge fan of Disney, you know, and Star Wars and Marvel. <laughs> you know, that was like what I love that's that was like what you know what I had been grazed on pretty much um and so for the opportunity to actually work on some of these iconic characters was just like the coolest experience and to be not only to do that but to like be able to um do kind of a our own take on these characters instead of like creating a one-to-one -one, um, copy, we actually had the opportunity, which very is so, so rare, to actually make a unique version of some of these iconic characters. Uh, just, and it was just awesome. So, you know, I, I, I kind of miss, it's a shame that, that game got canceled. I'll just say that it was just—it's a—it's a real shame. I think it got canceled a little prematurely um, because I think it had so—it was such a beautiful game and and was had just a great strong potential to it to like to do even more than what it was doing, but. It was sure fun to work on it. Why? Why it was, you know, kind of at the top of it where it was. Um. Oh yeah, thanks. And the thing is, like, I've been I've been using this workflow for years. Like, you know, I, I I've, every now and then I'll try other methods. You know, I do that. I think I'm doing it all the time as I'm trying other methods. But more or less, it has stayed fairly consistent with, you know, the style that, I mean, not the style, but just the the techniques that I'm doing to to get clean results and work fairly click quickly.
this eye back just a little bit. So at this stage, like what I'm more or less thinking about, just to kind of explain my thought process, is that I'm not doing a ton of like, I'm not checking proportions quite yet. I'm more or less trying to feel the shape language. I'm trying to decipher what this artist has already done and to try to work out a little bit on my own some of these things to try to find more of the the 3d appeal so once I get that you know once I get it looking closer then you know changing proportions is a little bit easier it's a little bit quicker but I want to start I want to define some of the core shapes first like I want to get the broad brush strokes down fast um, I don't remember or I don't know if if you know something about UV master 2.0 I was watching something on polygroup it but the UVs I watched before ZBrush 2021 version or 2019 version I don't know why there is nothing yet um, Spain yes I love Spain I lived in Madrid for a while um, I haven't heard any updates to um, from UV Master 2.0, um, nothing that I've I've really heard uh, from yet or anything about actually. Let me just clean up some of this stuff. My smooth is really changing this down, so I'm going to just turn down my intensity and kind of uh, define some of these facial planes again because they're just starting to get a little lost and then some are getting a little too bold too quickly Um, since you made the tutorial series, is that how you start your head with uh, all your heads or with your bust? Um, oh, Peel UV is not out yet. Matt, what is the material? So cool and shiny. So this material is from uh, Frank. Oh, I'm forgetting his last name. Frank Zing, um, and he teaches a Gumroad tutorial about likeness. I'll show. I'll just show that off real quick. So he teaches this this likeness course, which is really great, and his material is in this package that he sends out. So this is one of his materials that he made. But it's cool, it's kind of got a subsurfacey specular to it. Um, just a heads up the MPC presentation on. Their workflow for the Disney's Lion King is now on YouTube. Ooh, that's fun. Hey, what's up, bro? Not much. Um, to learn, do you, do you think work on anatomy books, studying bones and mus muscles and drawing them is important, or is it better to, to look and try to sculpt? The thing with anatomy is that the more you know, the more you know. <laughs> Um, <laughs> it's kind of a, a dumb thing to say, but I think anatomy is probably one of the most important things any artist, especially 3D artist, can study. There is 
and, and there's a number of great resources. I, I highly recommend just for like online learning, there is a, um, a website, proko.com. And he, you know, Stanley Prokopenko is a great teacher and has a really awesome package of learning, th you know, just he's a 2D teacher, obviously, but he teaches like every aspect and you get to learn good fundamentals as well as, you know, in-depth, in like highly detailed structure of anatomy so like being able to learn like exactly how how something should form and how it relates like how this collarbone actually relates to your um, scapula and just like figuring out all these all these things that when your body moves it moves you can mimic that because this is you know this is affecting this, which is affecting this, which is affecting this. I mean, um, there's, it, it's, so I, yes, <laughs> learn 2D, learn 3D, just take in as much as you can with anatomy. Even if you are you don't consider yourself a, like a, a 2D artist, uh, anatomy is, is something that will vastly improve your modeling skills. How can it be that I can be a better sculptor than draw? I made, I once made in ZBrush a 3D hand so I can use it later for 2D drawing. Can I trace my own work? That's awesome. <laughs> That's great. Um, yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of people that actually will do something in 3D and then um, will like do a rough of it in 3D and then they will start filling it out in 2D, you know, bring it into Photoshop or something and actually start painting over it. I, I know a lot of artists that do that, actually. You know, maybe their modeling isn't that great, but it's good enough to kind of fill in the, the blanks. Like, uh, what some people do will just, like, they'll draw something or model something, and then they'll quickly go in here and, you know, light it, throw in a couple lights, get some lighting information, and then start painting over that. The 3D software you don't need to worry about perspective. <laughs> I think the the thing that I get all the time is people always ask, you know, if I'm a 3D artist, do I need to practice or study 2D? Um, and I'm I'm always like a big proponent of. I don't think you need to because I know a ton of great 3D artists that that don't draw. But I do think that there's a level of understanding that comes when you can form something in your head and understand it in multiple ways. And so, you know, with, with 3D, sometimes, like, you can, you can cheat a lot of things that... I mean, same in 2D. Like 2D, you can cheat a lot of things, and 3D, you can cheat a lot of things. Like you, you don't have to, you know, fully understand some things. Um, but I, I think the benefit is that tools sharpen tools. That like the more 
I can understand lighting and composition and color theory, the better my 3D renders will come and the better you know my compositions and posing will become so like I I think I consider myself a really a pretty good um, poser oh poser <laughs> uh, but I think I, I consider myself a pretty good you know it, I can just take something and I can I can pose it really well in ZBrush with you know just doing transpose tool and working inside the ZBrush's, you know, tool sets. And I, it, I give that credit to, to mainly just studying anatomy and 2D drawing, 2D gesture drawing, where, you know, you're, all that you're doing is, um, you're working on line of action and balance and and talking about complex and simple shapes and straights versus curves and there's a whole there's a different mindset that you're thinking about like a lot of it is just thinking about this like is are these forms complementary to the overall structure and if i'm only thinking about the 3D forms, if I'm only thinking about this, then it's in the end they will still suffer. So, um, in your workflow for paint, you use manual retopology or um, Z remesher. So, if I'm ever doing anything, you know, professional, <laughs> and I mean anything that's like not just a ZBrush sketch, like this is just going to be like a ZBrush sketch, it's not going to be a fully articulated modeled thing uh, I I'll just do hand painting and um, you know whatever quick whatever I can do to quick speed up my workflow like using ZBrush's uh, UV master and um, there are other tools that they have Z remesher poly paint I do a lot of hand painting um, in poly paint so I'll do a you know a lot of that and just try to stay as much as I can in here and then if I ever need to to do anything more then maybe I'll kick out something that I can that I can texture maybe in Photoshop or just do touch-ups with after the render in in Photoshop as well he's got a really tiny skinny neck Um, so, oops. but if I am doing the full pipeline, like let's say I'm making this character for the video game that I'm working on, uh, the process is first I would make the high poly in ZBrush, and then I would retopologize it, and then I would bring it into another program like Substance Painter and do the detailed stuff from that. I'm gonna start giving the expression a little bit. One of the reasons I like this artist so much is I think he has a really um, great way of stylizing characters and like keeping, he keeps some things very realistic and then some things he just really pushes.
Um, oh, good. oh, good. You're welcome. Thanks for the questions. I like good questions. Now I'll start my work. I'll start working on some of the. the proportions so so what I'll normally do is just try to find like one thing that I'm gonna keep the same <laughs> and then scale everything based off that um, so right now her head is feeling really large compared to the rest of her watch I can do this cool thing where I'm going to store oops, this front view, and then I'm going to make this a hotkey by holding Control and Alt and then hitting 1. So now if I hit 1, it'll just pop into that. But the cool thing about this is now I can do um, a quick scale. We're going to scale everything together. But right now, like, even with that quick adjustment, I can see that I'm actually fairly close. You know, I can just quickly now. Kind of mush things around. I'm not worried about this. Art service and ZBrush actually. You know, I actually, um, and then get out of that. Um, I actually just got done teaching a tutorial. Oh, I wonder if this is all gone away. Oh, there we are. Um, on hard surface modeling in ZBrush. Going to do a quick call out. So I teach a whole plethora of different tutorials for those who don't know. Uh, you know, this is the intro. It's very, it's following very similar to the, the stuff that we're doing tonight. Um, you know, and then up to like a very complex character. And this is the one that I just did, which is all hard surface modeling and goes over kind of the step-by-step -step basis to not only how to model this guy, but to how to make him printable and how to make a 3d printable character and, and the things that you need to know to be able to do that so that's my latest tutorial and that's what i'm gonna finish on i guess <laughs> anyways um to me the benefits are staying in one package like that robot that i just showed there was start to finish in zbrush there was i didn't bring it out into maya i didn't bring it into another package to to clean up the topology or anything it is like all the keys from from a, a plain sphere to the finished piece it's all done in zbrush
try not to spend too much time on these ears as I know that they're just gonna be gone but just looking at this character's overall shape language and just need to fix some things so you'll notice that I mean people that have have watched me or who kind of know my style of, of sculpting is I like to stay in the low poly for a really long time and it's just because I like I'm I really like you know making sure my shapes are where they need to be before I before I start moving on because I'm a firm believer on if something looks bad at this stage it's probably going to look bad at a higher stage <laughs> And because I know that this will be just in one expression, I'm going to start modeling that in. There's often times that I will just start from an expression. You know, I'll, you know, I'll get the face, you know, 60 to 80 percent, and then I'll just start posing the face. And that's really the benefit of like. of trying to find personality. My Twitch just crashed, not sure if someone was writing something, but I seen, um, I saw it, oh. They probably said, you're a pretty cool dude. That's probably what was said. I get that. So things that I, I really like, the tools that I like to use, I am i don't use a whole lot of brushes. I know that there's some Z brushes out there that, that like to use blue of stuff. I actually enjoy just using, you know, probably a handful of brushes, but one that I like to use around the mouth. is this move topol topological brush so it just grabs brush or topology that is connecting like because the mouth and the two lips are actually not touching Ooh, it looks like there's a network error and it died i'm going to do a refresh
We're making it. It looks like we're having some technical difficulties tonight. Wonder if my internet is dying. Sounds like it's dying. We'll see. So, like, the things, another thing that I'm thinking about is um, add more subdivision levels after this. When do you understand that the polygons need to work just fine? Um, so, I'm still, yeah, I, I'd start adding more subdivisions. Um, mainly, like, the, the things that I'm thinking about still is just proportions and relations. Because, like, it's still not it's still not quite right like I'm finding looks like the symmetry got off somehow so I can just do a mirror and weld let's mirror that the other way okay somehow the symmetry got off anyways so I'm trying to find the shape language and some things that I'm noticing with this character and the concept is she's she's very square like they've got very square shapes to her they're just hard edges and yeah she still has like some softness but really she's she's got a lot of bold like her nose is basically just a, a rectangle and her lips are really hard defined rectangles almost so I'm trying to put you know imagine what that's gonna be in the the three-quarter or not the three-quarter but the profile and you know pushing some of those shapes together Oops. I don't know if my stream is working too well tonight. And like I know that this is closer to matching that profile, but I can there's still things that are bothering me that you know I, I want to pull these lips back. So she's just looking too ducky. And so this is this is why like not living and dying on that um, yeah checking reference I mean reference is great I, love, I always use reference um, but just making sure that that there's um you're using your judgment to to kind of fill in the blanks
So like giving her a little bit more square chin and squared out jaw. Like changing some of these things I think is going to help. Yeah, her forehead feels really large still. So I'm trying to find finding the balance. I think I'm having some streaming issues. I mean, it looks like I'm having some streaming issues. I'm going to see if anything else is showing up. Looks like it's still kind of going, maybe. <laughs> okay, well, I don't think Twitch is working too much. Um, it looks like we're having some issues on Twitch, so I'm just going to keep going and hope for the best. Oh, I'm not even seeing some of these. Twitch has crashed. Uh, it doesn't look like it's on my side of things. I've got pretty good connection still. Um, so a couple of the things that I'm I'm just adding in that I'm are some some curves that play off of each other so if you look at the profile I'm first hitting this big forehead plane curve and then the curve is going to switch to the nose and then curve the other way and curve again and I'm just playing around I think the only ones that are going to be the same curves are the lips, but I might even play around with that, and then it's in, and then out again. So this is the, these are the shapes. I'm, I'm doing um, convex and concave curves playing off each other as much as I can because it's creating interest in that profile, and it's going to be the same that you're seeing over here. And I just need to, to be very you know, simple about it so it's not overwhelming, I guess. But but just being very elegant. I think with, with female characters especially, it's it's all about the elegancy of the curves. sculpting things that don't matter. Yeah, 
know, just really quickly, I'll put um, some eye markers in there just so I can start um, seeing things, just seeing her, her life. Sometimes it's just a little hard to figure out the intensity without the eyes. A little cross-eyed there. Especially, I'll pose these a little bit. Half circles. Oh man, what was I thinking? Anyways, <laughs> she's got these blue eyes. So it's very simple. Get some, just something in there for the eyes. I like to use this zebra for the material. I think it's just a good, you know, a good solid base color. And then I'll just quickly go in there and pose the eyes. I can't believe that I didn't use. actual spheres for this. I made it think this base model a while ago. And it's just <laughs> it's fine. It's okay. Anyways. But just doing a little bit of that I think it'll kind of sell the intensity. Probably a little big still, like the eyes in general. Let's do that. Let's scale those down. So um, one way to do that is I'm just going to select all the parts, grow mask, and then with go back to the center-ish. Turn on this little thingy so I can scale them all together. Okay. Um, okay, let's see, I'm missing some questions. I know this is a super new question, but I'm self-taught and being overwhelmed with all the things in 3D in the world. I want to become a character model artist. Can you share with me a path to follow? Um, I see for Illy here for late. <laughs> answer your question. I thank you for your answers and your talents. Thank you for coming by. Be safe out there in Italy, by the way. Um, add more subdivisions in Dynamesh after this. When do you understand the polygons need to work? Um, fine. So initially, like what I'm trying to do is is just block in shapes. Like this is probably state. That's when I'm going to start subdividing or dynamesh or adding more topology. 
I don't want to get lost in the details. I think that's that's one thing that new people especially tend to do is they get lost in the amount because ZBrush is so much fun. Oh my gosh, ZBrush is fun. But it is really, really quite easy to to get lost in adding a bunch of details because that's kind of a fun part. Like, you know, you get you get to adding in some of these cuts or some of these like flappy details. That stuff's fun to do. Um, but there needs to be like groundwork made before any of that happens. So, uh, as far as like be a path to a professional character artist, uh, what I would recommend is, well, what I recommend is just start. <laughs> um, I get asked all the time, like, how's what's the quickest way to become a good artist? Like, how do I learn to draw? How do I learn to do anything? And the answer is always the same to me. It's just do it. Just get out there and you know, start drawing, start sculpting. Um, yeah, it's over for a new artist. It's quite overwhelming. I'm not going to lie. Like, uh, I think everyone experiences that a little bit that, you know, there's, there's so much to learn, right? There's a lot of the, there's a, a lot of programs. There's a lot of workflows and then not only that, but like, it's, also, like, how do I get good at all of, uh, how do I get good at these things? And the answer is just repetition. <laughs> you know, making your, nothing is going to, is going to help you learn by, 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 but by actually doing it. There's no shortcuts. You know, I don't think you're going to find a 3D artist out there that didn't put in a ton of work to get to where they are. Um, I talked at a school just a little while ago about how, you know, what, so, you know, people, they're artists and they're asking, so, oh man, all I want to do is just, I'd love to work at a game studio like you and it would be, you know, that's the dream. And I'm like, yeah, it is. And it's like, so what do I need to, what do I need to do to get there? And I'm like, well, you just need to do it. You just need to do things. And the, the secret is, is that there's no, like, I used to think, maybe I didn't know, I don't know if I ever used to think this. I, I think I was, I was always kind of this way when it came to art. That there's no point that you're done as an artist. <laughs> like, there's points that you, you get better, and there's jumps. But there's, I don't see that there's a stopping point when it comes to learning at any age, at any point in the career. So understand that like, yeah, it's, it's very overwhelming at the beginning, but it's a journey and it's all, you're, you're either going to invest in it and invest in it your whole life because you love it and it's something that you really like doing or it's, it's not. Um, I, I love art. I love, you know, trying different forms and trying different styles and trying different mediums. Um, and it's, it's challenging and there's, it's constantly updating. I mean, I haven't even, dove into most of the new stuff with ZBrush 2020, but it's, it's still, I mean, it's still so much fun to be, you know, to, to be here and to do stuff and to start trying to figure things out, you know, nothing's, there's no shortcuts. Cause I guess what I'm just trying to say is that like you will, people will learn ZBrush, um, by putting in effort. The same with like any form of art, I think. Like, I'm not going to become a great painter unless I put in effort, the time that it takes. I 
anyways, that was a lot of me talking. Um, how do you go about UVs, characters, creatures, have the best possible results? It's a bit hard to always keep in mind. They want to be textures. Um, I guess talent means how fast you learn rather than... And I, I disagree. Like, I think I think talent is hard work. <laughs> I th Yeah, I think some people may be more at naturally inclined, but I can tell you that a hard-working artist will beat a talented, a naturally talented artist any day. Because there's a different drive and a different level of, like, you, talent will only take you so far and then it becomes a skill that you've learned, right? Um, how do you go about your UVs? Um, so, I, there's a number of different ways of, of doing and creating UVs. Um, the there's there's I mean there's a whole no, that's a whole nother discussion. <laughs> um, I like to use a program called 3D Coat and or UV you know just the UV tools in Maya when I start making some UVs and you know there's there's some really good sources out there like Hippiedrome kind of shows a good way of like how topology should be. And, you know, you know, there's, I think UVs are constantly uh, a thing that people have, have been upgrading and, and making better. You know, there's, it just depends on, on basically what you're doing. <laughs> so, kind of fuddling around with this, we've got it to a, probably a decent enough point. You know, it's not exactly that, not exactly but that. we're getting there. We're getting there. Um, and I think things are, are starting to finally come together that I can start subdividing this a little bit. Um, Matt, do I believe in the power of vibrations? Oh, sure. I don't know what that is. I actually try to make a game with a team, but we try to make the gameplay before the art and the story. That's good. That's how it should be, actually. Good. Good art will not save a bad game. Um, do you ever feel like you hit a rut? I, uh, I think that's constant. Um, I think I go through through good times and bad times with, you know, I do a lot of 2D art. Like, if you, if you check out my Instagram page, which is where I post most of my stuff like let's, let's just take a little gander okay instagram so i post a lot of 2d art a lot of 2d art um most people who follow me probably don't know that i'm actually a 3d artist and like 2d is more of like a hobby i do some concept but very little um, more art direction on character design than anything but you know it's it's a it's a hobby and it's a skill set and there's times I feel like oh man like like this I'm like oh man my my 2d is on like uh, this gal I've, I've felt really good about um, and then like I do something in 3D, and I'm like, oh, my 3D's way off, and so I'll I'll switch, and I'll start putting more into 2D, or into 3D, and so I'll I'll focus on 3D for a lot more, and um, and then I'm like, oh man, <laughs> my two my 2D sucks again, <laughs> and so I think I'm always in a rut, but the only way to get out of any rut is just um. How about UV characters? Oh, wait. Hit a rut. Yeah. Uh, conspiracies. Let's talk about a conspiracy. I just listened to a podcast about a really cool conspiracy that I had never heard before. Um, it was about the UFO, the automobile. It was like Photon? Have I ever showed it? No, I haven't. That sounds awesome, though. Um... Anyway, so there, the time, let's see if I can get this right. So there was a time, um, 
in the 1800s, I think it was probably, um, it's got to be the late 1800s, like 1890-something. Anyways, there, there was a time where all over the country people were reporting UFO sightings. Like, that they were having these crazy, you know, hundred, you know, 50 people at a time, towns at a time, would see continuously all over the country, and there's, like, all over the news, reportings of this, like, a, of a UFO. Um, and they would talk about this UFO, and from all over the country, the, the reports were very similar. Like, you would get... Um, they all were kind of like a a blimp. They were all like football shaped, and you know they said that they would. There was this concept of like air travel back then, and they had zeppelins, I believe. Um, maybe they didn't have zeppelins back then yet but there's this concept of like lighter than air travel and that's what the wright brothers were trying to figure out was how to how to make a lighter than air travel vehicle and there was there was all this all of a sudden all these like ufos started showing up that would have big giant spotlights on them and they'd like like three or four spotlights on this things and in some reports had um they could hear or see people inside this spacecraft and they were all they were all referred to as like spacecraft more or less but there's like thousands and thousands of newspaper articles written about these. And then all of a sudden, they all stopped, like at the same time across the nation. <laughs> that something happened or something, I don't know. And that's like the, the interesting thing is like, why did they all stop more or less at the same time? And there's a lot of speculation to like, so was it... Was it a hoax? Was it a hoax that, because that happened all the time too, like people would report fake information or something to sell newspapers because that was like, that was the big business at the time. And, and but like it's just weird that like how many people had, had seen it and had credited it and newspaper articles would run stories saying that they they faked they faked the the first article and then they write another story saying actually we didn't fake that article and you know so they would refute their own claims that they faked it um and it was just this crazy thing and it was like thousands I think there were like the podcasts I listened to they said there was like three or four thousand newspaper articles around the country that wrote and like mass sightings like people on trains like hundreds of people on trains would see um, does the phrase let the darkness grow mean anything to me no but it's, it's creepy how do I look into that um, I'm not sure what to base the transformed boss monsters in the game. Maybe demons or puppets. My current monster is kind of based on both. Robert Hurl's Jester Clown, Bunny with Pumpkin Mask, that has similar features as Bombofet. Okay. No, Bombofet. Bombofet? Bombofet? Cool. Uh, my recommendation is to give purpose to your design to like you know if it's a jester if it's a, a jester clown bunny that maybe there's a reason that 
it is a clown and it's a jester, like maybe beyond that it looks, that's going to look creepy because no doubt that that's going to look creepy, but maybe you're also thinking about where this jester clown came from. Maybe he has like some vendetta against things. Okay, so I just went up in my first subdivision. Huzzah! Yay! Let the darkness grow. That makes I'm interested in that. Um, So now, as I've gone up in my subdivision, I'm going to now kind of refine some of these features. But at this point, I mean, because I've spent a lot of time on that lower poly, I'm not figuring out big things. I'm, I'm putting in more, more interest in, I mean, I'm putting more time in like refining and making the sculpt look more pleasant than trying to get the proportions or the look or the feel. I can actually, you know, go in and and you know, simply just do kind of a refinement pass. You know, that's not a super sculpt heavy. I mean, it still it still will be as this there's a lot of details and things that need to be defined and You know, starting again, I, I don't know if I'd use this. I don't know if I've ever used this base mesh that I created just now, or from where I started with this. I don't know if I'd use it again. It's got some weird pinching around the here, around the temples. It just kind of pinches right there and pulls those polys up. So that's okay. Um, just so you know, the guys, we have a free, oh, look at that, Nightbot. So he was a normal clown bunny in a circus, the smallest of four. All right. All right. <sighs> Is anyone else getting killed from, um, daylight savings? I don't know if anyone else is experiencing it. Like I am, probably the only one. I think it's helpful to have just a really long floating neck. Chrome ring any bells? No, I don't know what you're no, talking about. You're talking about. <laughs> Should I know any of those things? Hey, Mad Ari. Hey, Mad How's it going? Ari. How's it going? 
Does this mean that Twitch is back up? I feel like Twitch has been given issues tonight. So. Now just because I hate undetailed things, I'm just going to kind of polish this ear out just a little bit. Um, how do I measure your cartoonish proportions? X amount of heads, for example. So, so traditionally you get to like in realistic proportions. I believe a normal person is about eight heads tall. You know, so like, let's, let's do that. Okay, so one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So, like, if this was a a hero character, this is how tall they would be from here to here. That's that's more or less a very heroic proportion. A female is probably closer to seven heads. Um, but for you know, depending, it, it changes from stylized. I like to use kind of just the general rule of like, you know, about six and a half heads. So one, two, two, three, four, five, six, and a little bit. So, yeah, that's probably around the head count that I like to play off of um, and then use proportions based off of that so like things will be shorter and and kind of match that oh thank you start art whoops oh uh, an auto save is in progress So we're still trying to figure it out. So we're not we're not quite there, but it, I think it's getting closer to to feeling like how I want it to feel. And mainly for this this whole thing, I'll, I'll be kind of living inside a few different brushes. I use the Move brush primarily for everything, and then um, I will use the Pinch brush and this J A K or J A C Cut brush, which is what I'm using now, actually. And this is. This is the brush that I use to define hard edges, and I'll smooth things back. You know, that's things are just coming in a little bit too harsh, and so I'll kind of go in and define edges and planes like this, and then I'll smooth it back. Um, and then the the last brush that I use is mainly the clay buildup brush. So, where do you get that Jake brush? Um, um, this was a brush that a coworker of mine at Disney made uh, by the name of Ian Jacobs. I believe it's going to be cool. Um, 
by Ian Jacobs. So I I don't know if he offers the brush anywhere. Um, I don't sell the brush. I, it's, I, I try to just give the brushes that I use away on my tutorials. So like if you take any of my tutorials, it'll be included in one of those. Um, I should reach out to him and try to figure out if he'd like to to uh, at least offer that brush out because it, it is it's a really powerful brush it's pretty you know I use it a lot it's very similar to the damn standard brush like you could get away with just doing the damn standard too it's like an inverted damn standard um, especially the damn standard too where is it? Damn standard two brush. This is almost the same brush. You know, it's a little bit not as sharp. That's why I like it. It just kind of pulls out the planes. Maybe a little bit off topic. Um, do I ever have shoulder planes from using the Cintiq? Any tips on positioning to avoid it? So normally, I I like to position my Cintiq straight up and down, so it's like a, like a drawing canvas. Um, this is about a. This is about I don't know if, how to. It's the angle's probably this right now, which is I I don't like doing this because I find myself like hunching and I don't get shoulder pain but I do get a lot of neck pain when I do it like this um, and just because I'm I'm so used to it I don't really have I've got floating arm the whole way <laughs> but it's it's a uh, I, I prefer just straight up and down if you can do it I found that that long term is, I think it requires more muscle at the beginning <laughs> because your your arm's floating and you're not resting it on anything. Um, but I think long term it's, it's really helpful. It's really helped me at least. So just now checking the proportions again, and I'll do some broad stroke movements. It looks like some things are getting a little small. Actually, let's try. This is just me kind of eyeballing some measurements and figuring where I want to put some stuff.
Um, hello, seven coffins. Hello. There should be some more ergonomical ways. Yeah, maybe if I just lay sideways, I think that's probably the best way. <laughs> you hear audio twice. Is anyone else hearing the audio twice? Oh, I know why. That's probably why. Actually, let's make sure that's not happening anymore. Um, so stop, I actually did start with a base mesh for this one, though I kind of regret it. <laughs> I don't like starting with base meshes, especially, I just started with this one that I haven't really tested before, and it just had some kind of funky topology, and so it, it's fine, like, it'll be fine. Um... It'll be fine. It'll be fine. <laughs> but I'm, I'm constantly like, ugh, this is... It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Audio and YouTube is fine. Oh, audio YouTube sounds great. So some of these details I'll punch a little bit more with like this orb crack brush. go back and redefine some of these things. Some things that I also try to do when I'm sculpting is I, I see that I'll like favor one side more than the other. Like I'll, I'll sculpt on the, the right side or the left side, I mean, or the reverse of that. And then like I'll, I'll have to like, okay, <laughs> I've got to switch my mind and like switch it up just a little bit just to start seeing the, uh, the inverse. And like it's interesting. And I, and You'll see artists do this all the time when they're drawing, especially if you're watching like time lapses that artists will flip. Um, and that's that's kind of what I'm doing is like, so I'm just trying to see this model in as many varieties as I can. So.
Um, I just want to start blocking in, blocking in, just some simple eyebrows. Just to start uh, seeing these a little bit more. great thing about just like adding in topology like this is you have that full control of the Z modeler brush to you know add topology you know change and modify the topology on the go as you go which is pretty great So we've gotten to this point, and I'm going to start pushing the the uh, expression just a little bit more. You're kind of doing this compress. How's it going, Artabella? Hey, how's it going, Artabella? Which brush do you use for the eyebrows? Oh, so I that's a topology brush. I'll do it again for the eyelashes here in just a second. So it's it's you're just drawing out the topology. I'll I'll explain all about it in this uh, and when I do it again for the the uh, the eyelashes. So let's let's talk about this topology brush. So uh, I use this a lot when I block in eyelashes and eyebrows and and you know any maybe she's got like metal components to her. Anything that's going to be pretty easy to to just draw on top of and follow the form. Um, so B, and then I hit T, and then O, which is the topology brush. So how it works is you have to have no subdivisions on it. So this, you know, is just the eyebrows, which has, you know, 108 polygons for the whole thing. And I'm just going to slowly draw out some shapes. And then as soon as I make quads, it's going to 
show me a preview of where it's going to make some topology and it's going to extrude this out. And they, the intensity, I believe, determines how thick it will make this. So like right now it's not going to be really thick, but if I take this Z intensity up and then tap, it will actually create a thick strip of polygons. Um, and then I can clear it by holding Alt and just clicking and dragging. But the way that I like to use it is, and this is all just for blocking purposes, is I just want to see this character with just a little bit more life. And this is I'm slowly blocking out sh shapes. Is I'm just drawing out where I want those eyelashes to go, and I'm. It's really easy to have it follow. Um, the topology so you can see as those green dots start to form they're making it's going to show me where this topology is going to go and so now I have this nice little quadded out thing can tap to accept it and then I just do, because it automatically will mask everything else in there, and then I'll just do a split point to put it in its own thing. And then from there I can just move it just like regular um, topology. Oh, thanks, Joyce. Thanks for coming by. Um, hey, Hugo, how's it going? <laughs> it is good. Life has been busy. Um, I've got a lot of stuff going on. You know, not only like is family life busy, but you know, working on video games is is busy. I, I've kind of taken over some of the character lead roles um, of the game that we're making and. Um, it's just, it's a lot of stuff that's going on. So all good stuff. Mask. But just busy, yeah. Um, also been planning out a new tutorial to um, release pretty soon and hopefully that ha <laughs> that will happen if <laughs> so it's a light it's a very you know work life balance of making sure I'm not burning myself out and work has needed me more than personal life or personal projects at the time which has been good because like I like the project that we're on has been really fun um, and it's it's been fun to, to kind of step into this different role So I don't want to spend too much because I'll probably, with this character, actually use um, eyelashes. So I just want to get like a, a decent shape. Oh, ho.
that's not worth doing it this way. I was going to try to delete it or duplicate him and then um, flip him upside down. But it's actually just easier to redraw them. Oops. Split on mass points, so it puts its own subtool again. Just mask the back, and then I can kind of freeform manipulate um, the front of it. But just putting in some landmarks, even though like I won't keep, in the end I won't keep those eyelashes, but I will, they're just giving me kind of a guide. And it, it helps me to like orient things. See, see, it helps me see the full shape. Um, have you been working from home or still go to the office? Still going to the office for as long as we can. <laughs> um, it's been interesting to see what's been going on. My brother, he works up in, in Seattle, Washington, and they just closed down basically the entire city from this coronavirus stuff. And it's like as much as like you know, I don't think I'm, I, I am, I'm actually a paranoid, I'm a naturally paranoid guy. You could say that about me. Um, it's like, I want to believe that this is like, oh, not, it's, it's not that big of a deal maybe, but I, <laughs> other parts of me are like, oh man, maybe this is a big deal. Maybe I'm not giving it enough importance. I mean, I think anything that that can shut down the NBA is a scary thing which was just announced following this channel for a while so what is the channel all about basically I use ZBrush and love watching your professional artists at work um, so this is just a simple more or less character design focus not just not just the like the modeling aspects of it but 
more the thought process that goes into to the design uh, I think that's almost just as important as as the sculpting skills themselves is is just being able to to understand why something should look some way or the thought the you know the feeling behind a character instead of just trying to make something look pretty so that's what my channel is about oh also some you know some low level conspiracy talk every now and then why not um Who? How many wives do I have? Uh, to this date, I think I have 37, maybe 38. I don't know. It's hard to ask to tell when there's just so many. Not really sure why that question is being asked. Um, Matt, usually how long do you spend on a model in production? Uh, if you can answer that. Yeah. So normally like um, if like I'm assigned a character I depending on how what the character is being used for like if it's a hero character like a main marketing character it'll probably be like three months back and forth so like start to finish from like high poly to low poly about probably about three months um, for what we're actually doing doing now I would say the characters are about on a 30 workday schedule so they have you know 30 like so how many weeks 30 times divided by five is six seven six weeks six weeks so it's about six weeks Um, 
yeah so i mean it, it it really depends on like character to character there's there's a whole lot that goes into it that's more than just like straight up making especially when you're working with a team and there's reviews and there's you know feedback given and the, you have to have a lot of time for feedback so um back in the disney infinity days it was you know i think it was about three months per character from start to finish from from yeah from start to finish when we would f like finalized the 3d print it was about that much time Oh yeah, of course. Thanks for the questions. I like questions. I should probably save this. <laughs> they, and that's something that I don't do very often. But luckily, I really enjoy the auto save and quick save feature of ZBrush. <laughs> so I'm going to say that I'm at about um, 25 minutes left of my stream, and then I've got to call it quits but I'm gonna start blocking out some of this other stuff now that we have it here um, so this could be fun we'll just play around with some shapes oops and uh, just see where we get um, let's well, pan a sphere Let's make this a lot lower. So again, like I really like to make things really, really low. We're going to turn off perspective for this. And this is just to give me more control over things. So like, you know, working with a really high um, poly sphere is is going to be harder to actually get a clean shape of out of once I start manipulating it but this is going to be pretty straightforward if I can have such a low poly thing And I'll probably just do like a bunch of shapes to kind of clip some of this stuff together. Doesn't that look like a great little helmet? And maybe a pen. Um, let's see what we got here. Yeah. 
We're not going to append anything, but we're just going to add this thing, squash it down. And just move this into place. And because everything's so low, it's really easy to match shapes. And like that's all I'm really using this for now is just I'm just gonna match some shapes and then I can do things like you know this is obviously not this is gonna wrap around the head. And so I can wrap this around to where I want it to meet, maybe a little bit more. And then I can actually do things like, oh, let's add in some more uh, geometry. So we'll just add in a couple more loops and then build it out. And so I just slowly, I can block out, and, and this really is just shapes just to have shapes like I'm not going to use any of this um, in the end I like slash hate the auto save I sometimes like why do you even have a save now I don't disable it because because Zebra crashes I'm glad they save <laughs> yes um, there is a love hate relationship with the auto save for sure uh, and and you know because like once you start getting up in higher in higher poly count like yeah it's it's gonna here let's do a split on mass points for now uh, it will definitely like take longer and if you don't have a fast machine and that sucks um, I have a decent machine and it still sucks sometimes I'll tell you but. It does save my butt more than often, more than not. So that, for that reason, I am grateful. And I'm just getting some overlapping points. Um, again, this is all like I'm not worried about the inside I'm just worried about this the overall shape because I'm gonna start combining things and merging things and zero meshing things um, auto save hey Matt what's the name of the new the 2d cardist so the 2d artist is named Serge um, Piral he's a French I believe he's French um, this is his this is his station Serge Burau, Burau. Um, I can't he's an amazing artist he's he's definitely one of my favorites out there super nice guy was able to connect with him and meet with him um, at the Lightbox Expo last year and like everything that he does is just amazing I don't think this guy knows how to make anything that's not like flipping fantastic so um, Check him out. Give him a follow. A follow. It's definitely worth uh, doing. He's he's great. Fantastic. Super nice guy as well. So I'd, I'd highly recommend that. Yeah.
So again, just really rough shapes. Um, add in another rough shape. Yeah, the girls and the swords are, are awesome. Like I I'm amazed at like how much he's still able to like come up with new and awesome stuff with all of those. He goes through like his ap apocalyptic phase and then his his uh just girls with swords in general phase and oh man, this stuff is so is so appealing. He does a great job of just telling like a story with each piece that he does. Um, hey, how's it going, Falco? Falcao? The coronavirus is getting pretty out of control. Was going to accept a job in London, but now traveling. Oh, man. To Europe is... That sucks. Yeah, we have a trip planned to, to London um, at the end of summer. So I'm r hoping with warm weather, things will kind of take a good turn. But yeah, it's the coronavirus. It's the second time I've heard that. Um, but yeah, it's it's crazy. So that's sweet. Ooh, who's going to the Pixar interview? That's cool. That's good. Good luck. That's freaking awesome. Pixar is a studio that I keep, I want to visit. I'd love to visit their campus. I've been to the Disney studios a number of times um, and have a nice friendship of people there. Uh, and it's, but I've never been able to be, I guess I've never been around the, where the, the uh, Pixar studio is. I actually think this is a little bit more square up front too.
Oh yeah, I'd love to. I think that I've seen pictures and it just it looks amazing. I don't know if I've ever been in the Bay Area though. <laughs> Seems to always be in the opposite opposite direction of where I'm going. Oh, a cool bridge, huh? I like, I love bridges. <laughs> it's the Stanley Gate Bridge, right? So you'll see me do kind of a couple layers of like polish on this. Um, and one is to get like the cleaner topology and like the forms to, to feel right. And then I do another pass that's trying just to get the thinness because like right now it's like super thick. Because like I'm, I'd love to have like some pads underneath it, like you know the helmets have. Um, also, not sure if you remember we met last year at CTN. Oh yeah, that's right, we did. Artabella, I do remember meeting you. We were, I think I just said like was running off to a panel right when you, we talked. We did have awkwardly, we had an awkward lunch together, and it was we were just standing there. It was great. <laughs> yes, that's awesome. I love meeting people in real life. <laughs> it's the Stanley Bridge for sure, super low key. Yeah, it's just it's just right there hanging out. Man, it's a good bridge though. Why? I don't know why people keep not wanting to to see it. <laughs> Now, if I actually do auto group and I can separate, I can just keep the outside, which is what I want. Um, then I can keep a really nice crisp edge, delete hidden. I can just sharpen up some of these points. Sure, I've got the right 
proportions, clear all, front, yeah, that's better. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Oh, I did see that. That's awesome. Well, congrats to that person. <laughs> Who I can also not say their name, but that is the coolest thing. Ooh, this got real wide. Um, yes, I, I think, I think I do that even still, especially when streaming, I think there's a, there's like, oh, I want to, I want to do as much as possible. And then like, I find myself backtracking a lot. Um, I think that is a really good advice to have is just to slow down, like take your time, find the shapes, find the proportions. Maybe even for life, just slow down. Can I also find that like Talking distracts me too much. <laughs> So this is one reason I didn't really spend any time on the ears is because I know that I was going to hide them and smush them, but I did want there to be like a placement. Oh, my. I've got a couple more minutes, so I'll stay on. Um, just ahead. Oh, that's a night box. 
I don't know what Nightbot is. This is Nightbot. <laughs> I'm gonna be really, really quite loose with some of the, with this hair. So I'm just gonna block in and just to get some form and shapes. Try to figure out like the overall flow. And then like once I do that, I'll go through with either like a brush that I've, you know, that I use um, to actually sculpt the hair, or I'll you know do a variety of different things. But just trying to get shape language, you know, feeling like what is the hair trying to do? How is it trying to lay on the head? This is kind of this cool, like messy style. Um, when will I stream again? So I'm streaming again in two weeks. I think on the 25th is when it is. And I'll continue this girl. Um, she'll be the, the March focus. So we'll just pick up where we left off and, you know, fine tune things and sculpt the details. Okay, I think this is where I'm going to end off tonight as I've got to go to bed. Um, but I want to thank everyone for coming by, for the questions, and for the good times that we had, for bearing with me through some bugs and stuff. So, we're, we did it. Whatever. We did it. It's so great. We're all, we're awesome. Is yours and Mr. Shane Olson's work is similar? 
I would assume that it would be that I mean we worked together pretty closely for three years and and I don't know I haven't seen his workflow but I'm, I'm pretty sure that we probably have a similar ish workflow so um, but yeah he's great um, anyway so I'm gonna take off for the night thank you guys again for coming by for the questions and for everything and you guys have a wonderful night and happy sculpting